I have a lot of people ask me about composition. A lot of you guys get in touch and say I'm pretty good with my tech stuff, I understand my camera, my lenses and all the rest of it, but I'm a little bit stuck when it comes to finding compositions and putting them together. Well, it's a lovely evening here on uh, the Pfefferkase, which is the little lake at Pfefferkon, where I run my uh, masterclass in Switzerland. So I thought, well, why don't we come down here and spend a bit of time and see if we can find some compositions? And I'll just kind of go through them with you. Now, if you're coming out to photograph, uh, I would suggest bring your Kindle, as I have, because I don't know how long I'm going to have to wait for some light to change. We might have quite a nice sunset, I don't know. But either way, I thought I'd talk you through some compositions. See what we can find. Now I'm not filming with a camera person at the moment so I'm going to have to manage it all myself and wobble you guys about as we switch the camera on and off. Now we may or may not get the big sunset shot, the big landscape thing, but before I attack my Kindle and sit in to wait Here's a little shot that I quite like. I've taken it before, so I do know this shot, but let me just talk you through the composition and what it is. Look on the wall behind me, right there, right? This is Museum Pfefferkase. This is on the wall, the lake is over there. Now, I think there's quite a nice little graphic shot to be had here. I quite like graphic line shots. So let me talk you through the shot, then I'm gonna show you the composition of it. The shot I'm thinking of really consists of this shutter here or a part of it followed by a little bit of this shutter here with the name and the plain wall. The reason that I'm drawn to it and like it is the fact that these shutters are not the same height. They're unequal. So the two are kind of on different heights and that kind of, to me, makes it a little bit more interesting. So let's have a little look and I'll see if I can show you how I might uh, uh, set up the shot. First of all, let's get my trusty camera rolling. Now then. Let's stick it onto video so you can kind of see what I'm looking at. Now, here we go. That's not terribly interesting, is it? But look, as we sort of move to the side, we're beginning to get things square. The windows are not so interesting. I'm not so sure I like this little sort of gray line at the bottom. What happens if we get a little closer? Look, you see, it's getting a bit more interesting. Now, maybe we could zoom in a little bit, something like that. You see, now if I raise the camera up, I can start to get these shutters looking square on. So let's just move back a little bit. You see these are little tiny movements of me to get composition, right? This isn't a camera setting. Camera settings don't really, they help you. They kind of get you in the right place, but let's get our composition right. Now I'd say that's not a bad little composition. Maybe give it a bit more space. Just something like that. There we go, now then. Let's just stop the video. Let's go back and take the photo, shall we? So, all I've got to do is, is copy what I just did. So I've just got to zoom in a little tiny bit with my lens, uh, very carefully line up my shot. The edges, I want to be these sort of center bars on the shutter either side, because I think they frame it up nicely. They give a nice edge to the sides of the photo. So, I've just got to find the place I need to stand to make that happen. Let's come back a tiny bit. We're nearly there, forward a bit. I want the camera to be sort of perpendicular to the wall. I want it to be straight on. There we go, back an eensy bit more, eensy bit more. There we go, it's somewhere there, I think. That's looking nice and straight. There's our composition, and all I've got to do is take the photo. And there you go, it's just a very simple graphic composition and all it involves is a bit of moving around on your behalf of thinking through what it is you want to achieve and seeing the shot. That of course is the big deal, that's the first thing you've got to do is to be able to notice something and then in your head here, in your brilliant brain, in your first block of photography, you need to kind of imagine a frame around it, imagine how that shot could look, then you work backwards from the shot to get your composition. What sort of focal length will you need? Will you need a bit of zoom? You saw that we did for this. And where to stand, where to hold the camera, which angle to tilt it to, whether it's up or down, whether you need to raise the camera or get yourself lower and all that kind of stuff. So there we go, we got one little shot. Let's go see if we can find another one while we're waiting to see if we get the big landscape. Composition is about 
using your eyes. It's about looking to see what's going on around you. So when we're walking down the path, instead of like fiddling around, looking in the back of the camera, reading menu settings, wondering about other stuff, it's about walking around and looking around as you go, okay? You've got to use your eyes. You've got to become aware of things and start imagining that picture frame in your head and imagine that frame going around things. Something you could do is cut out a little oblong frame, you know, out of some cardboard and just start looking through it. You know, you might feel a bit of a numpty doing it, but this is a great way to start training yourself to get your photo radar going, to get yourself noticing compositions. Now, I was just walking down this little path here and I just kind of couldn't help but notice these grasses. Now, I know I'm a bit dark, that's because the camera is struggling to make an exposure for both that bright sky and for me, but we're looking straight into the sun. On the water beyond, we've got some sparkles and though you can't see it in the video camera, there's somebody in a boat just sitting out beyond these reeds. Uh, looks like he's fishing, actually. Now, the shot I'm thinking of is let's put some stuff into the corners. Let's make the corners a bit more busy because, look, we've got high reeds here. We've got reeds, 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 then they dip a bit here. And then over here, we've got this tree going on. Now, we can use that to frame with a little dip going on in the middle. We've got the sun in the sky, so we're going to shoot straight into the sun. Let me, again, get my camera rocking and rolling and show you what I mean. Now then, uh, put it onto video because it'll work better for you. Now then, let's just see video. Right, this is quite hard because I've got to shade my eyes. Now look, straight away there's the sun and I think you can see the little guy in the boat. Now, did you know you can move the sun around? You can move that light path that's sparkling on the water. Now if I move this way, I can kind of move that light path across. You see how the boat is starting to come onto the edge of that, but it's not really what I want because I don't want it up here by the edge of the tree. So we're going to move the boat to the right. Let's see where we can go. Now there's a nice little dip, a little hollow going on here in front of me, sort of in there. We can put the sun into that little sort of a V. That looks kind of nice. Uh, the corners are nicely filled. We've got that tree there and that tree there, and that's kind of creating our composition. I think the thing I'm likely to like the most though is again, by moving to the left, I can put the sun behind these reeds here. I think that'll look much more interesting. So all we have to do is try it. Look, all it is is a little bit of a move to the left. And there we go. I kind of like that. I don't know why I like putting the sun right behind things. So let's take our photo. Let's just stop that video, stick it into photo mode and take our shot. We're already in the right place. All I've got to do is to line up the shot, make sure the horizon's straight, move the camera up and down until I get it behind those reeds, tilt the camera up a bit and there's one shot. Now let's try the one I said about putting the sun into that dip between the reeds. Let's just kind of, let me see if I can just video this for you. So we've got the sun behind the reeds like that. Now let's move it into that dip over here. Here we go. Let's just raise the camera up a bit. That puts the sun higher. Let's bring the camera down a bit. That puts the sun lower. There we go. That's looking pretty good there, I think. So stop the video pop it into photo mode and let's have a little go at that shot. It's a shame because we're losing our boatman a bit. I don't think I like it quite so much, but there's our shot. Now, if we had a really lovely blue sky as opposed to that bit of haze and those vapor trails because we're quite near to an airport, I think it would have been a much more interesting shot. But nonetheless, it still has merit, it still has value, and it's great composition practice. It's a way for you to try things out, have a go at different things, have a play with it. So there we go, you've kind of seen a couple of compositions. I'm gonna walk on down the path a little bit further and just kind of see if we can find one of the little wooden docks that looks out into the water. Problem I'm likely to face is it's gonna be covered with fishermen who finished work, it's a lovely evening, and they wanna go catch a poisson. So let's go see if we can find the next one. Okay, look at this. We've got some nice evening light. You can see it on my face. That is because over there, we've got some sunset going on. Let me see if I can show you. Hang on. There we go. Fire up the old camera. Now, look. Over here, 
we have got some sunset. So why aren't I shooting the sunset? Why aren't you doing that brown? Well, it's not terribly exciting, is it? And even if I try and shoot along the dock a bit, look, you see the dock is lining up from here. It's going over there, but the sun is setting over there. And that's not quite so interesting. But what it is causing is some amazing light. You can see it on my face and it's happening. If you can see behind me, there's a dock behind me. Let me get close to the little monitor, see if I can point it out for you. Now look, we've got this dock going on here. There's a couple of fishermen on the end of it. And we've got some mountains going on beyond. The sky isn't terribly exciting, but you can just see from these posts here that the light is superb. That's the other thing. Not only have you got to master your composition, you also have to look at light and understand when it looks great. So my thought is we could possibly use some of this greenery that's going on here. We've got the fishermen on the other dock and let's see if we can get a picture of them because we've got some fabulous light. Right, I need to move quick because I don't want to lose that light. Now, if I come over here, let's just fire up the video so you can see what I'm thinking. Here we go, here's the dock. I like a bit of negative space. You could frame it up like this. So we're using the trees and the reflection. Um, you could kind of frame it up more. So there's more mountain. I think I prefer it going this way. Unfortunately, some people have just walked out onto that dock. So it's not just fishermen. If I zoom in just a tad, we could have a shot something along those lines. Now that's okay, but it isn't terribly exciting, is it? We need something here, something in this area to lead us into the shot. Now watch, composition is not a camera function, it's a U function. If I start to walk backwards, I start coming back towards you guys. Look what's starting to appear in the bottom of the frame. Yeah, the end of this dock, and that's making it a bit more interesting. Now this gap here, where is it? There, that's quite a wide gap. I wanna make this gap here smaller. How do you do that? It's not hard, look. Composition is a function of arms and legs and hands and knees. Let's just bend the knees and look, this little gap, where is it? There we go, there, that gap there is gonna decrease, look. You see, that looks so much better. And we got the little bits of timber either side. So that would be my composition. I really rather like that. Let's just shoot the photo. Look at that now, zoom it in to somehow match what we had in the video. Take it out a bit, here we go. Focal length or zoom and composition are best mates. There we go, get it straight, lovely light. Make sure I don't clip the ends of the dot and take the picture. That is peachy dandy. So if you were paying really close attention throughout this video, you may have noticed something a little odd, something different to most of the videos that I do. You may have noticed that I took all those pictures with my trusty old phone as opposed to my Nikon or my Fuji. Why would I do that? Why would I do that? Why am I being such an idiot? Why would I do that? It's because composition is not a camera function. It is a you function. It is something you have to manage yourself. There are no settings there. And I use my phone because I can't put settings on it. Many of you guys are very addicted to what settings did you use? Settings are of no real value to you because the settings that I might use or you might use in a given situation will only work in that situation. You take the same shot a few moments later with a slightly different composition, you may need totally different settings. That's why I've just done this composition thing using a phone. There's another reason too, and that is you nearly always got a phone in your pocket. That means there's no excuse for you not to practice composition at any time, wherever you are. I know a lot of people think, well, why would I practice photography? Well, of course you've got to practice it. It's like anything. You once practiced driving the car and now you make it look incredibly easy, even though you're doing some life dependent things every time you get into it, yet you're not even thinking about it. You are thinking about going on holiday or where you're gonna have dinner or what you're gonna to do tomorrow or something that happened at work earlier. Sometimes you'll drive home and think, I don't remember going through there. Now, it sounds pretty dangerous and it probably is, but nonetheless, it's something that human beings do. So practice these things. Um, if you found this video useful, please click in a couple of likes. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel or sign up to my newsletter on my website at photographycourses.biz forward slash video. Whenever we post a new video, I will, you will be one of the very first to know so you get to see it. So I hope that was of value to you. I hope you had a great time with it. If you're beginning with your photography, you're struggling with your composition, you know what to do. Until next time, take care. See you soon.